Hi everyone. We're hoping to go on our first kayak of the year tomorrow. So that means it's time to load the sit on top kayak onto the car for the first time. Now the sit on top kayak is a fairly chunky piece of kit, especially when it's a tandem one like this. So I thought I'd document what I actually do to get this loaded and secured on the vehicle. So this is our kayak. It's a bit mucky because it's been sat here all winter. I'm not going to bother cleaning that off. It'll come off when we start dragging it about into the water. The thing to note about this one is it has this stern wheel. I thought this was a bit of a gimmick when I bought it, but actually it's tremendously good where well, you only need to move the kayak short distances on land. A single person can do that quite easily without bothering taking a launching trolley with you. Most of these have a handle, so we can turn it over. And these ones with a stern wheel, the trick to manoeuvring about these about is to push it, don't pull it. It's actually quite difficult to pull with your hands behind your back, but if you push it, it's quite easy to manoeuvre. It is still a long thing, so getting around corners needs a bit of planning. But as you can see, that made it a lot easier and I'm able to do that on my own. Now, one of the first things I need to remember to do is take off this antenna. They generally just unscrew. Well, I carry a folding stool in the car, that's actually very useful because when you've got to reach up and do things on the roof of the car, and this is, albeit small, it's an SUV so it's a bit taller, um, I'm going to use the larger one that I've got outside for the moment, but a very handy thing to carry those. I need, need to get the roof rack for the, uh, the bikes off. down here where I won't stand on them. Now see at the moment the roof bars are fairly close together that's necessary for that bike rack but I want to move this front roof bar as far forward as I can so that I've got as much length between them as possible because that's quite a bit of leverage that long kayak so I don't want that trying to lift up. I don't use a bow or stern rope to hold it down. That's just going to rub the front of the car. So if I use ratchet straps and these are well spaced apart, I'm not going to have any issues. And I've certainly done up to 70 miles an hour with that on the roof with no problem. I do like these cruise aero bars. I mean, they are very quiet on this car. I'll give that give a bit of a slap to loosen it and then move the whole thing forward. I like to have it equidistant so there's a gap either side. So I'm tightening this reasonably but you can see I'm just using finger. I don't want to go too tight. I'm also lifting it up so that it, it sits correctly. Good. Now the roof rails come with, or roof bars come with these rubber inserts. And surprisingly, even with the rubber inserts missing, I was getting no wind noise from these. So anyway, I'll put these back in because this is what the kayak is going to sit on. So now we can put the end caps back on and lock them in place. 
don't forget, forget to lock them because I've already lost one of these and it meant I had to buy four brand new end caps because they all come, they all match the key. So this is quite a big lump of a thing. If I lift this, oh yeah, that's, that's heavy. I don't know what the actual weight is, it is, but uh, I'm not gonna try and lift that above my head and get it on in one go. So, given that Sally isn't with me at the moment, she's working, I need to get this on myself. Now the way I've found to do this is, first, I've got an old towel, I'm gonna protect the back of the tailgate with that, or the, the spoiler. And now we're gonna turn this upside down. Uh, so this, this is gonna end up on the ground. Now I don't want that getting too scratched up, although it is pretty battered by now, this one. So at some point I found a piece of old styrofoam uh, and then put a couple of rubble sacks over it and then duct taped it down. So just make something I can sit the, the transom of the cam, of the uh, kayak on. I'm gonna have to turn it over. It's one thing to watch when, especially when you unload, is that all the weight is in the keel here. It wants to sit this way up, not upside down, which is a good thing. But it does mean that if there's two of you lifting it above your heads and it's upside down and you start to just twist it over, it will hit a point of no return and it will try and flip. So you could end up easily spraining a wrist doing that. So I'm just going to dump it on there. And now I can lift the bow up and manoeuvre it round as necessary to lean it on there without scratching the transom, which is it's not going to be scratch anyway because they're on grass, but often you're in a car park where it's tarmac or concrete. And now I can lift this from the stern and slide it onto the roof bars. If I lift it, I can see how we're aligned. about there and I can look along and make sure it's aligned centrally. So if we look here, maybe a little bit forward but that's that's about where I like it. I mean technically you should probably have something hanging from here so a lorry or something doesn't drive into that but uh, yeah, that's, a, that's about it uh, position-wise. Bear in mind, if you've got a lot of stuff to load into the boot of the car before you go kayaking, you probably want to do it before you get this on because now if I lift the tailgate up, it only goes that far. Now I'm going to fold the rear one of the rear seats down because we have a big bag for our kayaking gear and that will go through here. Now what do we tie this down with? At the dealership I bought the kayak app several years ago they suggested those sort of luggage straps the one where you feed one end through the other and it's got a little spring clasp you press down and when you let go, it grips it. The only thing is that with that, you can't get much tension on it. Now, if I did have a, an expensive but light glass fiber sit-in kayak, uh, I'd probably want to be quite careful about how I handled it and how much I torque down those tie downs. Uh, given this thing, this is built like a rock. Uh, it's pretty flexible. So I prefer ratchet straps um, and I like these single-ended ones because I will run it across ways and then back again uh, and then sort of strap it like that and that means that I don't have to fiddle around with the spare end you know you've often got a normal ratchet strap you've got a several meters of strap and then that and a hook and that's separate from this part which has its own hook and you when you're trying to tie something like this down it means you've got to try and latch those hooks together. Now I tend not to 
strap it to the actual roof bar here. I strap it to the rail which is bolted to the vehicle, vehicle frame or body shell. Now, the natural thing to do is to put these over completely flat, to make sure they're like lovely and flat. The problem with that is they will vibrate like anything. Once you get over 30 miles an hour, you'll get this horrible droning noise. Uh, the trick I found is to twist them, which is strange, but I'll put a load of twists in and make sure each bit is twisted. that. And then twist it as I go and throw it back over again. Probably it should have shortened that, yep. That will do. And I'll tidy up this end shortly. Now we'll go and do the same for the front. So next to go on are the paddles. So I've got the leashes on these. It's always worth making sure you've got a leash because otherwise it's so easy to lose a paddle. Now I'm going to push some leash end in first and they can go in the gap here. And I'll just pull that down. Right. Now to make sure they don't go anywhere, I'm going to use those leashes to pull them taut against the, the roof rail here. And I'll tighten them round. I'll do the same with the other one as well. So we can now see that the paddles are pulled across to one side and they're pretty solidly stuck in place now. So next thing is what to do with these ends. I've left this until now because I wanted easy access to the paddle leashes. So I'm going to tie the ends around through this handle. I'm making sure that I also twist them because these will vibrate as well. By doing this, this is two for one, it gets rid of the end, tidies that up. But it also means that in the very, given the, how tight this is, in the very unlikely case that this tries to move in a front end collision, you have this, which is preventing this whole lot moving forward as well. I'm going to admit I'm not particularly good with knots, so I'm sure people will have comments as to a more appropriate knot to do here. That's part of the reason I like ratchet straps, because no knots are involved. Come on. And I'll do the same for the front. So there's a kayak ready to go.